I'm a big fan of chicken sweet and sour and this recipe is so delicious and easy to make and it keeps really really well so I have three um, corn fed uh, chicken breasts so this is part of the simply better collection we're going to literally brown this off in a moment or likely brown it off start the cooking process so I'm going to use some rapeseed oil a good drizzle of that and then just bring up the heat so I have a nice warm pan as soon as it hits that it's going to seal it in I'm going to put some onions peppers finish it with some green beans or these are the sugar snap peas whatever kind of vegetables you like and then of course some garlic so this is the base for the sweet and sour I think for me it's super delicious and really really easy uh, to make uh, I've done this with uh, beef and you can also do it with monkfish uh, prawns but chicken and and I'm using the raw chicken but if you've left over cooked chicken you can make up the sauce and then kind of sprinkle in the cooked chicken and just warm it through so let's get on and just get our chicken in so kind of spread that so I've kind of cubed the chicken that's three chicken breasts there so I'm gonna just let that just cook away there and while that's on cooking we're gonna crush our garlic we're gonna get our onion done and then we're gonna get our peppers so I have red green and yellow peppers so we're gonna cut this then just into cubes so just watch your finger now when you're doing this so that's the green pepper and the same then for the yellow and the red so there's lots of color lots of flavor and it's a recipe that as I say you can make ahead and I think the whole balance is getting it sweet and sour and I'll explain that as we're doing it here just in a moment so that's our yellow pepper and then the red so all of just is de-seeded it just to speed up the the recipe so just remove the core to seed the pepper and it's just uh, half one of each that I'm using here lovely now so that's that so for the onion you can chop it if you want to but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna literally cut it like this and we're gonna slice it so just curve your fingers you can use red onion again and this is gonna go into the pan with the chicken so just slice this watch the fingers see you by the way you curve the fingers there so just using a good sharp knife here never take your eyes off what you're doing and then this will go in on top of the chicken with the garlic in a moment so just curve your fingers lovely So this is half um, kind of a large onion and if the onion is small just use a full onion and red onions will give you a little bit more sweetness and nice color too so depending on what, on, what, on what you like so I'll crush the garlic in one moment let's just go back over to our chicken we're just gonna flip it over and just give it just sealing in the chicken that's the key so just flip this over here don't even season the chicken because we'll do our season at the very end so we will and I love corn fed chicken so it's fed on maize and it gives the most lovely succulent uh, juicy chicken so it does it's a beautiful product this so these are three skinless chicken breasts no bone no skin and just cut them into nice cubes okay so there we go so a little bit of color it's, it's you know just a tiny little bit of color you don't want them too brown so I'm gonna move all my vegetables over and then we're going to crush our garlic and then we're going to put the whole lot in to the actual pan so crushing this so just two cloves of garlic here and we're going to scrape that in so bring over your garlic crusher crush that so just give that a nice little coat and then all our vegetables go in so that is the green yellow red and the onion if you don't like green or yellow, you can just use red pepper. It doesn't really matter. Mmm. Smelling good already. So just mix this all through. So what we want to do is just let this just cook for a minute. We're not looking to brown it. And then I'm going to talk to you about how we make the sweet and sour. Sugar for sweetness, some brown sugar. We're going to use these beautiful... San Marzano tomatoes so these are the lovely chopped tomatoes a full can of that for the acidity and for the vinegar and the sharpness we're going to use some of that balsamic from Marina beautiful beautiful uh, balsamic a three-year-old and then for a lovely little bit of freshness this is a soy and ginger sauce and a sweet chili sauce and these are from an Irish company called Full On Foods so with the ginger it's really important that you shake it because all the lovely ginger goes down to the bottom give it a really good shake and a great and stir fries and then see the way it separates the sweet chili sauce like that and that's a really good sign you just give that a good shake so 
makes life easy if we just use the big spoon so we'll pop in our soya first so one of these so that's roughly about two tablespoons or thereabouts and there's not really no set recipe for this you can adjust it so say if you had too much vinegar you add more sugar but don't have it too sweet so if it's too sweet then you add more uh, vinegar all to your own palate that goes in there and that's a really lovely vinegar in some salad dressings. Sweet chili sauce is optional. There's a nice little bit of a kick to this. So maybe half of that. <laughs> you can always add more. And of course you can put in fresh chili too. Right. Give that a stir. So this is really important, our sweetness. So I'm going to use two spoonfuls of brown sugar. And then we're going to use the full can of tomatoes. So these tomatoes are so good, guys. So these are your San Marzano tomatoes. Stir this around and what I like to do is just using the same amount of water in here or you can use stock this is going to go in on top so I'm just using just water in there and then stir this so we'll just go through what we put in there the soy and ginger the sweet chili our lovely can of tomatoes and then the balsamic and the sugar and you can always adjust it so you're actually poaching the chicken in that so to speed up this put a lid on it and while that's on cooking, because this is going to take a little while to cook, we can just prepare our pineapple, which we're going to use. So the pineapple, everyone, when you're getting pineapple, you want to check that it's nice and ripe. So just once these come out, you know, very easy like that, you know that your pineapple is ripe. So using a big sharp knife, you're going to top and tail. And then, actually it makes it easier if you bring a bowl beside you and put all this in. So I love the acidity that the pineapple gives, the sweet and sour. You can use, of course, a can of pineapple, but the fresh pineapple for me is just delicious. So I don't need all this, but I'm gonna show you how to prepare it. So just using the big knife, see the way I'm going down the side of the pineapple. Lovely. So just try not to waste too much of the pineapple and then try to take off, obviously, the, the skin from the pineapple for this. And I just like to serve this with rice. I'm going to talk to you through. We've cooked some rice. Just a really nice, quick, simple uh, technique for cooking rice. I'll do that in a moment. Okay, so that's good enough. So we just want a small amount of the pineapple. We don't want a huge amount. So if we just cut it in half. And then we can move that over there. And then this one, I'm going to remove the core. So just watch your fingers when you're doing this. So if we go in here. Just remove the core. So that's no good. And then we're going to cube this. I love the juiciness of pineapple. So always make sure. And actually, if you get it and it's a little bit firm and a little bit underripe, just leave it in your kitchen for a few days. Don't keep it in the fridge to ripen. That's really, really, really important. So the same for this. That's half the pineapple that I'm using. And you know, when it is ripe, it's slippery. So be careful, especially when you have a sharp knife. So you just need to be really careful of that. So just cube this here. Now, we're going to have a little look at our sweet and sour now. See the way I'm not looking at camera because I'm focusing on this. I don't want to cup myself, and especially when it's so ripe, it can be slippery. So that's half the pineapple. So I usually put that in at the end. No need to put it in now because that gives lovely freshness to it. Okay, back on to our sweet and sour. That's cooking up nicely there. And it's poaching the chicken, so that's really, really important. So just let that just come to uh, the boil and let that poach away and that's really really important we're going to finish this with a little bit of spring onion and we're also going to put in some of these lovely sugar snaps so we'll just cut the sugar snaps just at an angle and these go in just the last minute for crunch for texture you could put bean sprouts into it so we're using the sugar snaps this is going to be nice and uh, crunchy and a nice bit of texture so you have that lovely softly poached chicken and then you'll have your lovely vegetables in that and the sweet and sour sauce if you were doing it with the likes of monkfish, you'd put the monkfish maybe in, you know, uh, maybe for about five, six minutes. It doesn't take long. Obviously, chicken will take longer to cook. And then if you make it too sweet, you add more vinegar and vice versa. So it's all to your own palate. That's so important. And we just season it up at the last minute. It's a great recipe because it keeps in your fridge for about four or five days, which is great. And you can freeze it. People love things that can make ahead. So I think it's a great one for the kids because you're getting lots of vegetables and also then you're getting your nice chicken in there too. So everyone's a winner so just cut these at an angle so that's them done 
now lovely and then for our um, spring onion this is going to again give lovely freshness you don't have to use both but we had some so we're going to cut this just at an angle so if you just curve your fingers and just cut this nice and this just goes in at the very last minute or can be sprinkled over again this will give nice texture so curve your fingers when you're chopping if you just run your fingers over just like that just bend your fingers a little bit and then use the green and the white of this so that's our spring onion nearly done they're lovely and crunchy and these uh, spring onion in a in um, the likes of a you know some mashed potato is gorgeous like if you cook them with some lovely butter so let's have a little look here now this looks very runny to me I want to show you a little tip here so we've mixed up a little bit of corn flour I remember the first time I used corn flour my mother asked me to take a beef, uh, thicken a beef stew. What did I do? Get the corn flour, just flung it in and ruin the whole thing. So I've learned from my mistakes, trust me. So I'm going to let that just cook away there. I don't want it too thick or too gloopy. That's really, really important. And then I'll just bring in all my other ingredients. So that's going to come to the boil. And again, I'll put the lid on it. So half a pineapple, if you can get the fresh. And actually, if you're going to use the can of pineapple, you can use the syrup because it's nice and sweet too. Actually, if it's done in natural juice, I think it's even nicer. So it is, okay, so that's that. Stir that through there. And then we need to season it. So I'm using the Simply Better Oriel Sea Salt. So a couple of good pinches of this. And then the most important thing is you're gonna taste it. So we're gonna talk about the rice now we're gonna serve this with. I just wanna stir this through here. It might need a little bit more corn flour. So you can always add more. The problem is if you add too much, then it's too gloopy. It's just not, not, not that nice to eat, to be honest with you. So stir that through there. So you can see that lovely color, this lovely crunch. The key is to seal it off the chicken because we want to cook this in real time and let that simmer there. Now, so while that's on finishing off the rice, I'm gonna bring this over here and show it to you. So what we did with the rice is just with some stock, stock cube, uh, a little bit of butter, about a teaspoonful of butter, put the rice roughly about half an inch or an inch, sorry, of uh, water just above it or stock, and then some salt, and that's it. You bring it to the boil for about eight minutes, and then using, this is what we call a balloon whisk, you whisk it. After about eight minutes, you whisk it again, and then you put the lid back on, switch off the gas, and then you let it just finish off. So it should be lovely and fluffy. So Mel, if you want to have a little look in here, I will show it to you. Just gonna rinse my spoon here. And it should be lovely and fluffy, and, and I think that's really, really important. Okay, it's moist, fluffy, and that's it there. And it's just a basmati, I should have said that rice that we used. So normally when we um, serve this, okay, you can use a ramekin, you can use whatever you want to, you can just spoon this in here. Just gonna mix this through here, okay. And then we just literally spoon this here into this ramekin. So this is what we call a pudding base, and so we kind of do a sticky toffee pudding in that. So press that just gently. It is hot, so be careful. You can use the teacup, it doesn't really matter. And then that just goes onto the plate. A little bit of basil. I'm gonna just flip over my board. Okay, and we're gonna put a little bit of basil, just a tiny little bit of basil. It's gonna go into the sweet and sour, and then we're gonna serve it up. It's as easy as that. So when you're cutting your herbs, just watch the fingers, nice and thin. Now, if you were to leave basil like that just on the side, what happens is that it'll go, it'll, mo it'll go black very, very quickly. So what you do is just chop it and literally finish it in the sauce. Now, okay, so we'll just use this spoon. And that's our sauce there. I just wanna show you, Mel, just the coat and consistency of it and then taste it. So it's not too runny. Mm. It's good. Just finish it with that and bring over. And it's not too gloopy. Make sure your chicken is cooked because I cut it kind of evenly. And it's a nice kind of light, sweet and sour. But poaching the chicken, the fresh pineapple, I think you've got a lovely dish there. And that crunchy vegetables. Mm. And that's it. Just garnish it, a little sprig of fresh basil. And that is a great family favorite. That's my chicken, sweet and sour with that lovely fluffy rice. Enjoy.